beautiful makers welcome to episode 68 of stitching the high notes my name is Joanna and this is my channel all about knitting sewing music the arts cross stitching and all things crafty really how are you all doing it's been a little bit over a month or just about a month since my last confession as I like to say or rather my last episode <laughs> I have a lot to share with you today, so let's just jump right in it, shall we? As is tradition, we start each episode properly and officially with tea time. And you all, I'm drinking tea. <laughs> if you are a long time viewer of the podcast, hello and welcome back. If you are new, welcome. But if you have been watching for some time over the last three years, you'll know I started out drinking from this very teacup and actually tea and Earl Grey, which is what's happening today. But steadily coffee re-entered my life, then La Croix or La Croix, however you like to say it. And it's a rare thing for me to be drinking tea on the podcast, but today I felt like going old school. So I'm having some Aged Earl Grey by Numi. If you can kind of see here. Pardon my grown out couple of weeks, few weeks now, nails, leftover gel manicure from the wedding, my friend's wedding. But yeah, it feels good to be back on the tea. It's 2 o'clock on a Tuesday, 2 p.m. on a Tuesday, 2 p.m. on a Tuesday, uh, May 28th. I took the day off. I took an extra day off after the Memorial Day weekend. I needed it, and I'm really glad I had the foresight to do so. It was a very full weekend, which I will chat about later in backstage chatter. But, yeah, I... I'm really glad. Let me grab a sip here instead of just awkwardly holding it. Grab your beverage of choice. Cheers. Mm. Still pretty hot, but pretty darn good. I'm gonna have to take out this tea bag. Oh, so good. So yeah, so I have lots to chat with you and visit with you about today. Have some sort of kind of finished makes. I have some new cast on or new cast on uh, specifically. I have some stitching to share, um, some shop news, some dream making, dream knitting specifically, a new segment for you all. Which I've been cooking up. Um, some new treasures. I mean, there's a lot. <laughs> I thought I would have nothing to talk about today and I started typing up everything. I didn't have a lot to talk about. <laughs> and uh, I have some books to share with you all. My book mojo is still going strong this year. And what else? An ask away question in the ask away thread. There's a Ravelry group. I, I neglect to mention this. And I don't know what happened over time. It just kind of fell by the wayside. But there is a Ravelry group for stitching the high notes. And I like to say that we're a group of knitting misfits. And should you be interested and want to join us, please do go over to the group. I've just really been getting back into Ravelry lately. It's kind of a full circle. It's been a very full circle month in terms of my making. And... Um, I've been more active in the group and in other groups that I follow and have joined. Um, and I happened to see the other day that there was a question in the Ask Away thread in the Stitching the High Notes group. 
a uh, few of you all continue and thank you for doing so continue to post in the community corkboard thread which is set up for people who have shops or patterns or your designers to share what's going on and share your patterns any discounts that you want to offer the group so thank you for continuing to do that and if you're interested please go check that out it's a great way to learn more about our community and our fellow makers who have their shops who have shops of their own um, what else is in that thread? An ask away thread, as I mentioned, where you can ask me anything within reason and I will answer it on the next episode. There's an introductions thread and someone introduced themselves a couple of weeks ago, which was great. Um, what else is in there? I used to do episode show notes in there and I might continue to do that, but usually they're just down below and the uh, description I almost said subscription box in the description box down below which I find to be a lot easier for everyone um, but I'm happy to open up a thread in the Ravelry group as well if you're interested there um, there's details about make-alongs which we haven't had one in a while not since the pumpkin mal I don't believe and yeah giveaways every once in a while it's a great, it's a great group. It's a great group of knitting misfits and making misfits. It's a cross stitch corner thread as well, which a few of you all have been posting in um, during Stitch Mania. So yeah, go check that out. So yeah, lots to chat about. Let's get started. I'm gonna get another sip of tea. My mojo, my knitting mojo specifically, has been gone kind of since last fall, I want to say. It's had little moments of coming back and returning. Like I did my flaunted cowl and I started to really get into the kill toes um, that I'm so sad to say didn't get made in time for my friend's wedding but it's really taken a big hit and the last few weeks I've really kind of tried to assess why that is and sure it's time there's not enough time in the world to make everything that you want am I right stress totally a factor in losing your mojo but when I really got to it, it was because I've had a lot of knitting, specifically knitting failures. <laughs> There's no way to skirt around the F word. <laughs> I've had some big failures and it's taken, it's caused me to lose my mojo and a lot of my motivation rather to knit and cast on things and really kind of dedicate the time in creating the things that I'm so inspired to create, which is really sad when you think about it. But the moment I kind of accepted that, looked it square in the face of that was the reason, and it started with my summer dreams pullover, which is so beautiful, but it doesn't fit because I, one, my gauge was off, and two, I cast on at least two sizes too small. And then it was not finishing my my uh, kilt hose in time for the wedding. And there were reasons for that, really good solid reasons for that. Life happened, work, etc. Something's gotta give. And unfortunately, a lot of the times that's the knitting and the making. There were something I'm gonna show here in a bit you know, there's languishing whips that I really want to do, but I just don't have the brain space or haven't allowed myself the brain space to finish them or figure out the thing that's causing me to have a roadblock or the techniques that are roadblocks in me finishing those objects. And there are a few other factors. Oh, well, and as much as I love my shop 
and I'm so thrilled and excited about my shop and I love sewing and you can see it just like brings this huge smile to my face. That took up a big chunk of my making time, my personal making time and finding that equilibrium again and that balance, whatever that means, <laughs> means that a lot of my mojo went out the window and I've heard many makers talk about this who have opened up their shops and it takes takes about a year and it hasn't even been a full year since I opened up my shop to kind of find your rhythm again. The rhythm of your needles, <laughs> if you will. So all of that to say is that I kind of wanted to share that with you all because I know a lot of you all have that from time to time. I'll have it again at some point. But taking a look and really understanding why you're frustrated with your lack of, I was frustrated with my lack of focus and want to make. It's this weird thing like you're wanting to make all of the things, but you're not because you're so overwhelmed with how much you wanna make all of the things. Do you understand what I'm saying? So yeah. So once I, I faced that, my mojo came back big time in a really refreshing, wonderful way that it hasn't, it hasn't been at this level in a very long time. And, and, and it's different in that it's mojo that, and motivation to just be curious and inspired and learn and enjoy the process and not be so focused on churning out things and the product and the timelines and in some ways it's just making peace with the failures peace with the fact that those timelines are not going to happen and for whatever reason once you do that you can all of a sudden cast on and knit half of a cow which i will be showing you so <laughs> anyway my first object that I wanted to share with you all, my first make, is a semi-finished, and I'm making peace with this because I wanted to seam this up before I podcasted, but I wanted to podcast with you all. I wanted to stop waiting until everything was done and I had everything to show off. I want to get back to sharing the process with you because that's where the joy is, is in the process. So I blocked... Finally, my Acque, however you say it, Cowl by Hilary Smith Callis. Well, hopefully you said that right. So it's all blocked out. Oh, isn't this so pretty? It's such a beautiful, beautiful colorway. This is going to be seamed up. I'll tell you about the yarn here in a second. But this is going to be seamed up here. And then we'll go around my neck like this and it's a kerchief style cowl. Got my long tail for seaming. Put that all the way. And it'll go like this. And it's gonna be perfect for the summer in San Francisco. And it'll go over my little faux leather jacket. It won't look so crazy, <laughs> but it'll go like this. And I love it. This is yarn in um, the colorway Christmas by Chromatic Yarns. Let me get the light going. There we go. Oh, isn't that so pretty? This is in Hannah, um, who is the dyer behind Chromatic Yarns in her sturdy sock base. And the colorway is inspired by Critical Role, which is a online uh, once a week Dungeons and Dragons game played by a bunch of friends who all happen to be voice actors and it is thoroughly entertaining and wonderful just good old storytelling and time with friends where you get to watch these friends have a blast with each other and Christmas is what they call at the end of the year I don't know how much they do this anymore but at the early days they would share the gifts, similar to how we do here on podcasts, the gifts that people send because they were inspired by the podcasts um, that are made by people 
and it's just heartwarming and wonderful. And so this colorway was inspired by that and it's gorgeous. I knit this on US size three needles. I made gauge and it blocked out beautifully. It wasn't an aggressive blocking. I just pinned out the edging. So you have this little garter edge here. I soaked it for about 15 minutes or so and I used some wool wash by Woolen and Company in the cherry blossom scent. Oh, it smells so good, but it's not overpowering, which is wonderful. And again, I just need to seam it up. So we'll see if it happens tonight. It happens sometime this week, we'll see. <laughs> I am roadblocked, complete honesty, because, and I need to look in the pattern to see if this is how it is or if I made a mistake and I'll just have to work around it. But you can kind of see my pieces don't line up completely. One is shorter than the other. I don't know how well you can see that. There, see? Yeah. Hence the roadblock to not completely finishing it. But I'm going to persevere. At the end of the day, I think I can get these two pieces matching at the bottom here. And then up here is what will be at the neck. And if it's, it's like maybe an inch, about an inch off. If it is, it'll be on my neck and my hair will be over it. So there you go. And then I will learn a lesson and I will move on and I might cast on another one of these if I really like it because it's a perfect one skein with just a little bit left over um, kind of stash buster. So there you go. So to be continued, that's kind of what it looks like when it's finally properly seamed up. <laughs> there you go. Then I cast something new on and I am not at the end of my row, so let me do that really fast. <laughs> I just have to knit, so I'm going to do that as I tell you about this cowl. So I looked through my stash behind me, which there's several of these kind of cubby holes up here of yarn, and I'm just wanting to knit through it. My mojo is starting to come back. I spent the weekend, a couple of weekends ago, watching podcasts really for the first time in a while, uh, podcasts in floss tubes, um, and was really getting inspired again, was feeling very centered, Watching those podcasts has been very centering. It was overwhelming for a while because I haven't been able to, or have, haven't made the time um, to knit and make personal things as much as I've wanted to, or as much as I used to when I started out three, I think it's been like almost five years since I've been knitting. And, um, I just was like, you know, I'm just gonna hang out with my friends. I have a quiet weekend for once. I'm just going, I'm just gonna do it. I actually was doing it the weekend before while I was sewing for the shop and it was fantastic. I think I watched like, slash listened to 20 podcasts, <laughs> like a crazy lady. And oh, it was wonderful. And then the last two weekends ago, I did the same and just sat in it. I, I think I had cast on this cowl or started to formulate the plan. And I had looked through here, there were two skeins, which I can't nab. I might talk about it later, if I remember my notes correctly. And I was searching for a pattern for a really super large shawl, but I didn't have quite enough yardage for it. So I continued to look through my other little boxes where the other parts of my stash are. And I found this yarn. This yarn, let me grab it, grab it, was gifted to me by my friend Cheryl. She was in Florence a couple of years ago. I still have the bag. 
Firenze. And as a good friend does, when she sees a yarn shop, she stopped and bought me some yarn. <laughs> and she bought me two skeins of each of these colors in the Joya Baby, which is by Bertania Filati. That's so pretty. And it's this gorgeous sport weight yarn. And each skein has 50 grams. And it's in this turquoisey color. Get the light there so you can see it. This beautiful gray color. And this beautiful magenta purple. I guess it's really purple color. We are back. My phone overheated, so I had to stop there for a little bit. But I finished my row, and so I can share with you that I decided to cast on with this beautiful yarn, the Shift Cowl. Yay! So the Shift Cowl is by Andrea Mowry, and it's a beautiful, gorgeous pattern that she also has a version that is a shawl as well. It was a pattern made with using spin drift yarn in mind or kind of your um, spun yarn, um, hand spun yarn. But I decided to use it. it. It just, the minute I saw these three colors, I had that pattern right in my mind after seeing samples of it at Stitches West this year. And the colors play together so beautifully. And it's just, and I love patterns where it's a slip knit construction um, in terms of color work. So you can see there's floats on the back, but you're not, you're doing one color at a time. You're not doing um, two colors at a time. Usually when I do that, I do color work, um, yarn in one hand and yarn in the other hand. So it's super easy, super simple. I love it so much. So this construction is kind of similar to the Aque Cowl, Aque, however you say it, um, in that you will seam up the side eventually. So this side bit right here will be seamed up until this point here, which means that this is where it'll sit like this on my neck. It'll get kind of like, like a this. I'll show the picture here again so you can see it properly on <laughs> beautiful Andrea Mowry. Oh, I love it so much. I love the yarn. The yarn is this springy ply is what I call it. Um, I want to say I'm taking it apart. It looks like it's a four ply. So you, hopefully you can see this. I don't have my phone hooked up to my TV so you can see, but um, I think it's like chain plied yarn. I'll take a video if this isn't showing up well, but you can kind of see, and then it's all wound together, plied together, and it's beautiful. It's 100% merino, so it's super soft. I don't believe it's super wash. Let me look at the thingamajigger here. I again have two skeins of each, so I've almost used one skein of the turquoise, and I'm down to these bits here. I'm looking for the label. Here we go. Yes, 100% virgin wool. Actually, I don't know if it's superwash merino. I might have gotten that from um, Ravelry when I put it in as a stash. I'm even using stash again because I do eventually, maybe this summer, we'll see what happens. I'm like, best best plans, best intentions to do this, but I'm trying to let life, the flow of life happen. <laughs> um, I want to document my stash again on Ravelry because I stopped a year and a half ago kind of doing that. And it's just so wonderful to Look for patterns based on the stash that you have and you can easily access. It's a great tool, Ravelry. Ravelry. Anyway, 
So I have this housed right now in one of my favorite bags, which is by Little Skein in the Big Wool. I love this sheep fabric. One of my favorites. And the needles I wanted to tell you, I'm using a size four, US four needle. The pattern, I'm using my Carbons interchangeables. Um, the pattern calls for US size five. I did the gauge swatch in Stockinet, as it says, and it said that you needed to get 25 stitches per four inches. And when I used a size five needle, I got 22. So I went up, um, or down rather, to a size four, did the gauge swatch again, and got 24-ish stitches um, per four inches. Um, and I like the fabric. It's a bit stiff, but it, that's kind of what it looks like in the pattern in the samples that I've seen. It still has a pretty good drape pretty good drape to it. It's going to be nice and warm and snug and that's good that the yarn is so uh, soft um, because it'll be probably right up here up against my neck which is pretty sensitive especially these days. I'm like red all the time right here. It's a heritage thing. All of my, all of my family has it. <laughs> so I love knitting with the yarn. It can be a little hard on my hands in long stretches, which I have been doing, as you can see, I cast this on on May 18th. So I've done quite a bit, pretty monogamous. Um, so I have to be careful, I have to stop and stretch, set it down for a little bit because I am using smaller needles. I think I had to go down to a size four from a size five because this is a sport weight, but it's pretty, it's almost a DK when I'm looking at it. So. I think that's probably why. And I I think I've seen this spindrift. It's a little bit thinner in some ways um, than this is. So that might be why size five. Plus, you know, the designers vary in the way that they throw or do co continental versus um, whatever the other kind of knitting is that I'm totally blanking on. <laughs> um, but yeah, I am loving it. I love the colors. I love, love, love the colors. And I love how they play on each other. I love now getting to this other bit here. So I have another color as the base. And I just can't wait to see what's going to happen next. I think if I finish this, as I think I will when I finish this and wear it, I'm going to love it. I can definitely see me casting on another one. I don't think I would do the cow or the shawl because I'm very much a cowl person. Um, unless it's a gigantic shawl. I've learned this about myself because I have a bunch of small shawls and I hardly wear them. So, but I've been wearing my cowls lately. It's been nice. So that is my main make in progress which brings us now to cross stitch corner cross stitching may stitch mania i didn't do a lot of it <laughs> and the reason is because my family moved and life happened and i'm forgiving myself i did do a little bit of stitching though and i still love stitching but I had a month where if I was going to make anything when I get home, when I'm not sewing for the shop, it had to be something I barely look at. My eyes hurt after a full day of work. Um, I really need to get some blue, um, blue light lenses for my glasses to block out blue light. There you go. Ooh, I'm gonna have a sip of tea. Um, and so cross stitching just, it wasn't happening this month. And I just had a lot on my head, on my mind, on my heart. And I just was finding cross stitching frustrating, which is a bummer. And I didn't want to force it because I love cross stitching. So I was not about to like 
muddy it up with frustration. You know what I mean? So the little bit that I did do, I did get some starts going, which is good. But the first thing is I did a little bit on my um, Will You Be My Neighbor, which is by Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. It's this cute little pattern I picked up in 2016 <laughs> from Stitches West. And I have all of these in my bags from Stitching the High Notes, my needlework bags with little windows. And I did a little bit on this guy. I, isn't that so cute? Oh, I've got the needle through here, hold on. So I did the two little yarn balls and most of the needles that go with it. So there you go. Hopefully you can see this okay. I'm going blind here. So I did this little yarn guy here and I did this little yarn ball right here with the needles. This is a crochet hook right here. So I did that. And then I started the very bottom right here. And I'll show you a picture of what that's gonna look like. I, again, love this piece. It's been a joy to make. I think I definitely early on put this down. I started out with best intentions to finish this this much, month during Stitch Mania. But especially this piece because of the linen fabric and the Stellina stuff in it, it's it's very difficult to see the even weave. I think that this is something that probably in a hoop would be a hell of a lot easier <laughs> to stitch instead of stitching in hand. Let me get the um, fabric information so I can tell you. <laughs> It's a crystal bashful 13 by 18 piece cashel 28 count, so 28 count fabric from PTP hand dyed fabric, picture this plus.com. And it came in the kit from Frosted Pumpkins to Tree. It came with the all of the floss, which I wound up on bobbins, which is my favorite way to organize them. Came with the needle, the pattern, etc. So I did just that little bit and then waved the white flag and said, I gotta wait till some other time. <laughs> and then I started a couple of pieces. So I started, this is in my Halloween, one of my Halloween bags. I love this fabric. This fabric's by Alexander Henry, which is one of my favorite uh, designers. So I started the Night Owl, as you can see, by Satsuma Street. This is one of four, I think, ornaments. I've completed two already um, for Halloween, for a Halloween tree, which I have now. So it's on perforated paper, so I've done this little bit. Oh, now I have it out, I'm like, I wanna work on this. Cause this is pretty straightforward and simple. It's easy peasy, easy going. This is great um, lunchtime stitching. It's great. So, Got that here, and here are all of the four little patterns, if you can see those. Again, I'm going blind here, so hopefully I'm still recording. <laughs> and then the last start I did, Shocker, also in one of my bags from the last update, the fabric, um, and also Alexander Henry. Got a thing going. This is uh, the Find the Witch Within pattern and it came in a kit. Um, I'll show the photo here um, by Junebug and Darlin. Um, some of my favorite, a growing favorite of mine, a designer. I love how they have their yard on this floss card that's a library card. Isn't that so clever? The, my one critique though is that the thread comes or the floss comes pre-cut and it's quite short pieces. I really like having a very long piece and doing it um, so you pull a single strand 
and then you put the two ends together and put those through the needle and then you um, instead of doing a knot um, or kind of forget what it's called or doing the technique what you have to do with this because um, of the shorter pieces of floss um, you kind of go through and then kind of tack it down that's what it you kind of tack it down I like it when it's one long piece and then you have like a loop and you just put your needle through the loop on the back and then you are ready to go it's clean it's easy peasy so that's kind of annoying but it's not the end of the world this is on 14 count I think Ada yeah 14 count Ada so it's black again this is probably why I stopped doing stitch mania because <laughs> I was stitching on black but I got quite a bit done I mean it was literally like one lunch hour I did one letter, one lunch hour I did the other letter. So I could have really, I could have finished this if the fates had aligned. I'm using a needle binder that I love from A Needle Runs Through It. Um, it says, I solemnly swear that I'm up to no good. A Harry Potter reference. I thought it was good for this little thing. And I love the shape of this hoop. Um, yeah, I love the shape of this hoop. It's really cool. Not your standard round shaped hoop. So that's all I did for Stitch Mania. <laughs> Best laid plans. Maybe next year the planets will align and I'll have a little bit more brain space and time to do it. But um, it was fun while it lasted. <laughs> and I will continue to stitch throughout the year and it might be something usually I stitch a lot during the summer I'm finding because of the heat which it's I say heat because it's not super hot out here um in the bay area but um but it's something that's a little bit easier to do when I do sit outside in the sun um during my lunch hour so yeah so that's cross stitch corner it's been a while since I've had an Ask Away segment on the old podcast, and I'm really excited to have it back. Um, as I mentioned before, there's an Ask Away thread in the Ravelry group, and please do feel free to go in there and ask me a question. You can ask me down in the comments down below here on YouTube as well. I read every single comment, um, and I will answer it on the next episode. So Casey, lovely Casey, hi Casey, reached out and she asked um, and said, I recently have dabbled back into stitching after not stitching for nine plus years. Yay, welcome back. I was wondering if you could recommend some good floss tube channels. Thanks in advance. Thanks Casey. So yes, floss tube. So I admittedly am still kind of digging in and diving into the world of floss tube. Floss tube, if you don't know, is the stitching branch of our making family. They kind of have their own hashtag and kind of subsect of making vlogs and podcasts here on YouTube. And they're fantastic. They're super inspiring and hilarious and they're awesome. So I have a sol I have many that I watch, um, but the ones that I would recommend that I watch very often um, are these, which are the big ones. They are the grocery girls of the cross stitching world. If I may, may, may be so bold to say, <laughs> um, that's Priscilla and Chelsea of the Real Housewives of Cross Stitch or the Housewives of Cross Stitch. They're hilarious. They're the mother and daughter. Team, I guess they're more of the legacy knits, if you will, of the uh, cross stitching world. Um, they podcast and put up a video every single Saturday morning. So, like clockwork, you, c you can start your Saturday with your cup of coffee, and or if it's the afternoon, by the time they put it up, your afternoon tea, and see what they've been stitching. They're prolific stitchers, they're hilarious. Um, they love um, the primitive style. A lot of these are mainly primitive style um, designs. Um, they are awesome finishers as well, and so they have a lot of ideas of how to finish products. Um, 
they definitely do a lot of stitching. <laughs> like literally they're like, it's like roll call. They're just like, okay, I did a little bit on this and I did a little bit on this. And I started this and I'm about to start this. I mean, it's like stitch mania all year long. It's amazing. And they mainly stitch on coffee dyed linen. Um, and they stitch in hand. They have some great tutorials on how to stitch in hand that I need to watch again because they do it top down, I think, is how they do it. Or they do it the opposite way of how I do it. And they're so fast. They're like NASCAR driver, NASCAR team, like change the tire fast. <laughs> um, so they're super inspiration and super inspirational and amazing. I gotta slow down because I'm having trouble talking today, but it's all good. So they also just hooked up with the Fat Quarter Shop. Um, the Fat Quarter Shop is also doing a cross stitch floss tube as well, which I haven't really checked out, so I wouldn't necessarily recommend it yet. But I'm sure it's a Fat Quarter Shop, so I'm sure it's pretty awesome. But and they have some more ideas about what their favorite items and notions and needles are. Um, but yeah, if you just want to sit and chat with somebody every Saturday morning while you're have your coffee and want to start stitching, they're, they're awesome. Uh, the next one is a favorite of mine is Jan Hicks Creates. And Jan is one of the first floss tube channels that I really got into. She also knits as well. Um, but she now lives in Hawaii, so it's wonderful to see her sitting by the beach and the ocean and nature and the rainbows, and she's stitching away. Um, she has kind of floss tube, kind of podcast segment kind of type episodes, and then she also has Stitch With Me where she has a camera just on her stitching, and she's talking as she's stitching, and it's very calming and soothing and I learn a lot while she is doing the stitch with me videos as well. So also prolific. I've gotten some really good pattern ideas from her, including one that I had hoped to finally cast on um, or start rather uh, this month. Um, but I will do it, Jan. I will. <laughs> um, and that's the playing with Jack's pumpkin um, themed piece. So definitely recommend Jan Hicks Crates. Uh, another one is Vanna Pfeiffer. Um, I've seen maybe maybe five to ten of her episodes. She's I think quite a few now. Um, and she her style isn't necessarily my style but she is also prolific and she's very interesting in how she finishes pieces as well. I'm always interested to see how people are finishing uh, finishing their pieces outside of just putting them in a frame and hanging them on the wall because I think uh, there's many possibilities out there. So Vonna Pfeiffer is very interesting. Um, and then Top Knot Stitcher, who I need to catch up on the last couple of episodes. Um, this is Abby and I believe she's still living here in the San Francisco Bay Area. I really want to meet Abby someday. She's very sweet, very awesome, very also prolific stitcher as well, um, very passionate. Um, yeah, and I really like her style. It kind of runs the gamut, kind of like my style is. Um, I like modern, I like some primitive pieces, not a lot of primitive pieces. Um, and she started stitching super young as well and has just kind of continued um, throughout her life. So top knot stitcher is awesome. Uh, just keep stitching another mother and daughter team Pam and Steph. They're hilarious They're hilarious. They're awesome prolific as well. I love their style. They have a I mean hilarious great sense of humor um, Yeah, definitely recommend them and then golf uh, golf coast stitcher Julie um, I really enjoy her floss tube as well. I'm behind on her um, episodes, but I need to catch up. And she also sells patterns as well. So those are just a handful, um, but those are kind of the main ones that I check out all of the time. If you, anybody else has um, recommendations, please let us know down in the comments down below or in the Ask Away thread. Feel free to 
add that in the ask away thread um, in the Ravelry group too. So thank you, Casey, for your question. New treasures. It has been a while also since I've had this segment and I haven't been buying yarn on purpose because I'm really trying to knit through my stash and be more mindful about what I have and using what I have. But every once in a while, something comes along at the right time and you have to listen to God <laughs> saying, yes, Joanna, you need to buy this yarn. And that is coloring book yarns, y'all. I couldn't contain my excitement. I totally sang to this yarn on Instagram. Hopefully you can see this good or well. Self-striping, gorgeous yarn, handmade, hand-dyed. Very, very hard to get. Um, the dyer behind coloring book yarns does not do it very often. Which I totally understand. You gotta do what you gotta do. But it is so well made, so beautiful, so vibrant. And it finally happened where I saw the Instagram notice. I had money to burn in my pocket and a willingness to get a skein of yarn. And I got it. This is the Hey Girl colorway. I'll show a picture here from the Instagram account so you can see what it looks like knit up. I am so excited to cast this on. So my plan, and I talked about this a little bit on Instagram, which I neglected, I show in the beginning, but I neglected to say I'm on Instagram as Opera Joe, and uh, also at Stitching the High Notes with a bunch of underscores. But on Opera Joe, I share a lot of my personal making, kind of personal escapades and shenanigans. So I shared that I had gotten this. I sang to the yarn. <laughs> I sang, so this is love. Mm -hmm. So this is love from Cinderella. And I want to do an afterthought heel, but I've been a weenie to do it. I think a beautiful skein of self striping yarn, you don't want to interrupt that heel. You want it to be perfect. And there are patterns out there. And one of them is the afterthought heel. So I'm gonna do it. My friends Rachel and Denise are gonna hold my hand if I need help, be my support line. Rachel has a beautiful, of Treehouse Knits, has a beautiful video. Denise does as well now on YouTube, tutorials. It's gonna happen. And I'm gonna practice before I do this one because I don't wanna mess this up. I'm gonna practice on Socks that I cast on at Rhinebeck 2017. This is what I was talking about, roadblock. Hurts your mojo. I literally have two socks for the last two years, almost, that are ready for afterthought heels. <laughs> I don't know why my pins are in different places. I gotta figure it out. But part of it is because this yarn is also so precious and beautiful. Oh, I love this yarn. This is, um, oh my God, why am I like? The Cozy Knitter. Oh my God. I can't believe it. Couldn't think of it. This is why it's hard to do a solo podcast because you don't have somebody going, Joanna, it's the Cozy Knitter. Duh. <laughs> so this is in the gingerbread colorway. So I'm going to be brave and do afterthought heel. I have the alternate skein, there was a heel toes and cuff skein that came with it. And we're gonna do this. We're gonna do this y'all. And then once I do this, at least one of them, I should probably do both of them so I don't have like second sock syndrome. I'm going, my, my reward will be casting on these. So I think this will be my summer sock project. I'll probably keep these. I usually make socks now for mom because I don't really wear socks that much unless I'm traveling somewhere um, where socks are needed, but I don't really need them out here to like wear around the house. So 
Yarn fumes. Because I've been back on Ravelry so much, I've been kind of getting that old groove back where I'm looking at patterns and I'm adding them to my favorites and adding some to my queue. And so Dream Knitting has returned as well as the mojo. So I have been looking through my stash and I've received some beautiful yarn, a lot of which will be for future giveaways. Um, but some of it I'm totally gonna keep and it was from beautiful, um, kind, dear, sweet Pam. Thank you so much, Pam. And she sent four of these beautiful skeins. Oh my goodness. If these aren't focusing well, I'll put up a photo, but hopefully they are. Of Trailhead Yarns. They're hand-dyed vegan yarns. Euro flax, so 100% wet spun linen. This is in the Fifi Island, I believe is how you say it, colorway. There are little slight speckles in there. So I don't know if you can see that, which is really cool. It's not something I've necessarily seen personally in linen yarn. Usually you just see straight up, the straight up color, <laughs> one color. Um, this is a sport weight linen yarn, and each skein is 100 grams, 270 yarns. It's a product of Belgium and hand dyed in the Ottawa Valley. Beautiful, beautiful color. You can tell I'm into turquoise. Turquoise is my jam. So um, I've been on the hunt for a pattern and I haven't necessarily come up with one yet because I have 180 yards and it's not quite enough for a garment for me. It probably is enough for a tank top. So I need to start looking for some linen tank top ideas. I think I have some favorited, I have like little, um, bundles um so i started one that's specifically for linen patterns because otherwise they're kind of all in my t-shirt or pullover um sections and yeah the hunt on ravelry continues and i will keep you updated if you have ideas let me know in the comments down below i'd love to know or send me a note on ravelry if you like prefer to do that um and this brings up something which is the summer garment mail. You may have noticed if you've been a watcher for a while, uh, I usually, the last couple of years, I've had a summer garment mail and I haven't started it this year and that's because of everything going on. It was just like some had to get, you know what I mean? So, but I'm missing it and I, I don't wanna break, I don't wanna break the tradition. <laughs> So let me know if you'd be interested in starting it up June 1st or, I don't know, June 8th or something. Um, maybe I'll just start it June 1st just to be clean and have it go until, maybe have it go until August 31st. Um, and yeah, because I have plenty of yarn and things for giveaways. If you're interested to donate an item, just reach out to me at operjo at stitchingthehighnotes.com or on Ravelry. Um, but yeah, I'm just kind of spurred the moment. I was thinking about it when I was typing up my notes and I was like, you know, I think let's do it. But honestly, before, before my family fully moved and some other things finished up in the last couple weeks, it was just so overwhelming to think about um, organizing and putting together and I didn't want to do it haphazardly. I kind of felt like I did that a little bit last year because things picked up steam in some areas, but I think, I think this year, I think let's do it. Let's keep the tradition alive. Let me know what you think. More details to come next episode, which means I guess I need to podcast again very soon even if it's 15 minutes. <laughs> All right, dream knitting. The other dream knitting I wanted to chat about was I pulled down the yarn that I had mentioned earlier, which are these two gorgeous skirts of a homespun house. Oh, the thing is coming out. Whoa. 
this is in the soft sock base in the heart shaped box colorway. Oh, so pretty. Love this colorway. And I just, I want to do something with these two skeins. And I thought, okay, the only way I'm going to do a shawl is if I could do a giant shawl. So I started looking through patterns. Oh, Lord, this is coming apart. Well, I'm going to put this together because it's going to bug me. Do, do, do. Pause. Um, let me get my notes here. So I found two giant shawls that I love, but that isn't enough yardage for them. And it's also, they're shawls that really call for a tonal yarn or one color yarn so that you can really see the beautiful lace detail and the simplicity and gorgeousness <laughs> of the pattern. And those two shawls are the Kyler shawl by Isabel Kramer. I found this shawl searching through Ravelry, fell in love. I really like the gray version that she's wearing. I think it would be a fantastic kind of everyday city shawl during work. Um, and then I saw Ellie of Craft House Magic was making it um, and just recently finished it, I believe. And yeah, this is definitely my cue. No time date, but something I would love to make in the future. And then the next one I found is the Rockwood Shawl by September Knits. And I've fallen in love with this shawl as well. And I think also the color. I mean, I really try not to choose patterns based on the color and that, but it's inevitable that that's what's gonna attract to you, right? So um, that is in my queue as well. And I've added a, several other new patterns to my favorites as well. So if you're interested, check out my favorites on Ravelry. I have Opera Joe as well, if I neglected to put that down below or mention it earlier. Um, and also my ever-growing queue, which I had just cleaned out, but now it's growing again. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. So, that brings me to a new segment that I came up with the other day because there are so many things. Part of, part of what... I'm jumping around here. So, part of what has kept me from podcasting a lot, too, besides not feeling like I have a lot to share or show, is... I felt like I was always saying, I'm going to do this and I'm going to cast on this and I got yarn for this and I'm getting ready to do it. And I just, I was building it up. So I just felt like I was failing all the time. I was making all these plans and I wasn't executing them. And, um, but I love chatting about it. I love hearing other people talk about it and podcasts and getting ideas. I love, um, hearing about why they are attracted to a pattern, why they like the pattern, why they don't like a pattern. And I have dream knitting and stuff, but I am trying to really share things that I actually have yarn for that I've already cast on. I guess then it would be make some progress, but, um, but there are so many things that I love, but will never make, which brings me to the new segment, things I love, but will never make. <laughs> And this is goes for knitting and stitching and all kinds of stuff. So these are things that I love, I'm inspired by, but either because they're not my style, they're not really designed for my body type, my height, my shoulder width, whatever. Um, they're also things that aren't for my climate. So mittens i'm sorry to say i have one pair that i say i'm gonna make every year and i never make i swear i will make them because they have to do with pumpkin spice but i'm not gonna be on the mitten train because i'm in california i'm not in tahoe i'm not gonna wear mittens like ever so there's no point to me <laughs> making them but they're gorgeous patterns and I'm inspired by them and I do want to chat about them every once in a while and share them with you. So, yeah. So, the patterns that I wanted to share with you for this inaugural, inaugural, see, I'm really having trouble talking today, for this segment initiation of this segment, 
yeah, let's have some tea. <laughs> I have a few patterns that I want to share. Mm -mm -mm. Um, so, oh, do I? Did I write any down? All that build up and I didn't write any down. For shame, shame bell, shame, shame. So one general one I wanted to say was for cross stitch. So I am definitely a modern design, subversive cross stitch kind of lady. The primitive style, which is all of the rage and the majority of floss tube and stitchers adore, is not my thing. But, so it's something I, I love and admire, but I will never make. But I admire it and I admire the design and I love that people are so passionate about it and make all of the things, especially Priscilla and Chelsea. I mean, it's like primitive style heaven. But one thing, even with modern designers that I don't understand, and I understand the history of it, is the alphabet sampler. I am a single woman currently. I am home maybe 10 hours of the week, not counting weekends that I have fully off. I do not need a wall or a couch full of pillows of alphabets. <laughs> but there are so many cool patterns out there that have the sampler and it, I, Definitely understand the historical significance of them and admire that. I've gone and paid my homage to the American Wing at the Met Museum in New York with all of the beautiful embroidery and said 18th century alphabet samplers, but I personally am not ever going to make it. There are some knitting patterns, general, since I didn't write any specific ones down, but that'll be for the next time. Um, I am not a fan of the baubles. I've mentioned this in years past. I took a Japanese technique knitting class a couple years ago at a Stitches West. And we did some baubles and I tell you, they just look like skin tags to me. <laughs> I'm not going to make something with skin tags all over my body. Now one exception though, that is swaying me from this, I'm like slurring my words, uh, is the folksy sweater, which just came out by Mandarines or Melody Hoffman. And it's charming and it's subtle. It's maybe 10 different little baubles around the yoke of the sweater. But other patterns, they're lovely, they're beautiful. I'm thinking, I think of the Spellman uh, sweater by Tristan of Dragon Horde Yarn. That is a beautiful pattern. Not ever gonna make it because of the skin tags. <laughs> Sorry, Tristan. <laughs> I know you'll understand. Um, and there's some other really beautiful patterns out there as well, but yeah, just not my jam. Love it, not gonna make it. Um, yeah, so I think that's kind of an odd way, general way of this new segment. Um, but I'm looking forward to kind of gathering these things, um, as I, as time goes on and sharing them and chatting about them with you all. Um, there's some, oh, I know one off the top of my head that a lot of people are making right now and it's gorgeous. The color work is like to die for it. and it's the Soldatna crop sweater. And a lot of people are lengthening it as well if they're not into the crop top. Um, and another one is the Swike, uh, Swig or Zweig um, sweater as well um, by the same designer and beautiful, beautiful sweater. But for me, the way my shoulders are and the way my stature is, I know right away that I will look like a drowned cat if I wear that type of sweater. <laughs> so for me, I'm not gonna make it. Maybe I make it someday for another person, but for me it won't happen, but I admire it, I love it. I so wanna join in on it. 
because it's fun to all be knitting the same thing and getting excited about it and seeing all the different color schemes that people are doing, but yeah, it's just not gonna happen. So anyway, on to the next segment. <laughs> All right, I have a little bit of shop news before I get onto backstage chatter. And that is that the next shop update will be June 2nd, this coming Sunday uh, at 1 p.m. Pacific time. And I'm really excited. I just picked up the fabric in the last couple of days and I've started to cut some of it and started to sew some of it. Um, but I don't have any bags to show you, but you've seen some of my sample needlework bags. This is an example of my drawstring bags. This is one sample. I'll show a picture here of another version of drawstring bag that I make as well. Um, but I wanted to show you the fabrics. I just couldn't like handle not showing it to you. So the first combo I have is this beautiful, oh my gosh, I can't even. Oh, wasn't this so pretty? So this is by Cloud9, I believe. Yes, which I've been using a lot of their fabrics lately. It's organic cotton. I'm really interested in this company and what they stand for. Um, sustainable um, product making and how their fabrics are made. I um, encourage you to check out their website if you're interested, but I loved this pattern. I love the flamingos. I'm really going for summer inspired fabrics right now. Oh, so pretty. Oh, and it's got like the wildflowers, the fish. It's got a little bit of a sea theme and these beautiful, really cool designed flamingos. So this will be paired for, this will be in needlework bags. And these, this uh, fabric will also be in drawstring bags with a coordinating linen black bottom and drawstring channel. Uh, and then the next combo is this. Oh, I saw this um, at Stone. I got all of these at Stone Mountain and Daughter Fabrics in Berkeley, California. And I saw this a month and a half ago and took a picture. I said, oh, the next update, I'm gonna do this one. And that is this, oh, isn't this so pretty? Summer wildflowers again, but also with strawberries. So, so, so pretty. So kind of modern, but really elegant. Oh, I love it. So these will be in needlework bags and then also drawstring bags with this coordinating, if you can see bottom and then drawstring channel as well and then finally so i always I, i've started to do collections where i have three different fabric patterns with the same theme uh, all inspired by summer this time around and i'm going to have a couple of different summer updates so once a month i have a collection of three um, fabrics based on the theme or the season or the holiday that's around the corner. So the third in this collection is, I love this fabric, this really, really pretty succulent, look at all the little succulent terrariums. So this is also 100% um, organic cotton. Oh, so pretty. And it's on this beautiful lilac background hopefully the camera is picking it up with all of these really pretty uh, little terrariums and succulents and plants oh so pretty this is by a company called mona luna which is new to me but i was excited to find another company that does uh 100 organic cotton fabrics as well a beautiful hand to this fabric. I don't know if you can kind of see that, the drape of it. Uh, Stone Mountain and Daughter has a like a whole section of organic cotton um, fabrics. So I always kind of make a beeline there first. So this will be in needlework as well and drawstring bags with the same Essex linen. And I picked up the Essex linen. I stocked up today at another local fabric shop, um, SF Bay Quilts 
which I adore as well. And I've gotten a lot of fabric um, for the shop there as well. So there you go. So these will all be made up in the next week or so. Um, so the shop update is on Sunday. There will be some bags ready to ship. I will have everything ready to ship by the following week. Um, that means that essentially it's kind of pre-order. It's made to order. That's how my updates have been um, the last four or five months or so. Um, it's a model that works really well for my schedule. However, I'm working very hard to getting to a place where everything is ready to ship by the time that I have the update. I think with the summer, I'll be able to kind of get ahead, uh, ahead of things um, and can really work towards that. And I'll be, within a week, um, these bags will go out because I will have some time to sew beforehand earlier than I have in updates past. If that made any sense, good on you. <laughs> so if you have any questions, reach out to me at opera joe at stitchingthehighnotes.com. Um, there will be some stitch markers as well. I'm on the hunt for some summer inspired stitch markers. Um, and I already have a few hummingbird ones that I wanna put up in the shop again too. And I'm working on notion bags. I've been teasing those for a while, but I really am going to do my darndest to get some notion bags in all of these fabrics as well. So you can get a bag and a notions bag that matches as well. So, and then lots, lots more that I want to do for the shop this summer, which I'm really excited about. So that's going to bring it to backstage chatter, which is not necessarily making related, but kind of an update on kind of the general things going on in life. It's backstage chatter because uh, I work at the opera as a fundraiser and I'm also a singer with the symphony across the way. So I'm backstage in some capacity or another chattering away. <laughs> um, so yeah, let me grab a little sip of tea, grab your beverage. Let's visit here a minute. So books, I've continued, I'm just like turning into a bookworm. It, it feels like when I was a kid, I just can't get enough. And it's of all kind of genres, YA, nonfiction, inspirational, spiritual, political. I'm just like all over the board. I'm trying to reel it in and really focus on like a couple of books at a time. Um, but I did finish a book uh, since we visited last, and that is On Luna Time by Amber Crawley of Maker's Haven. She has a beautiful channel here on YouTube. She's a yarn dyer and maker, photographer, and an author, and the book On Luna Time was beautiful. I cannot recommend it more highly enough. It, um, it was her first book, novella? what she was saying and uh, it was charming and there's gonna be a sequel and I can't wait because there were some twists at the end of the book that I was like what what and I was texting her I was like ah! <laughs> so I uh, it was a beautiful beautiful book um, I I loved getting it's kind of a magical mystical timey-wimey if you will as a doctor who fan, a Whovian, I love time travel and that kind of thing, historic, um, kind of bent on it, taking a look at history and how people lived in the past and how similar they are to today. It's a love story, it's got romance, it's got uh, family and just great character development, um, just absolutely charming. So I encourage you to check that out. She has a new book coming out soon. I am blanking on the name, but I'll put it down here and in the show notes. Um, and then the sequel will be coming out probably next year. She does yarn boxes or book boxes slash yarn boxes for the book sometimes. Um, she has some stuff in her shop right now, I believe. And then she has an advent calendar too. And I think I might be getting one. 
So, <laughs> uh, so other books. I have continued to read off and on the audio version of The Throne of Glass, Air of Fire, which is book three in the series by Sarah J. Moss. It's, it's cool. I like it. Um, it's good fantasy, kind of YA, I think it is YA, young adult. Um, yeah, it's good. It's good at the end of a long day if I just need something totally outside of the news and thinking hard and I just need to be swept away by a story. It's fantastic and I love having that as an option. Um, I picked up the book Circe, I believe is how you say it, by Madeline Miller the other day. I have a hard uh, bound cover of it because I just was needing a break from digital screens and um, just kind of was stressed out, so I was feeling my head. Plus it's been raining off and on, so the barometric pressure has been really getting to me the older I get, man. Um, and that is a, I love the story. I'm literally only on like chapter eight or something. Um, so I'll have more to chat about that later, but I think I'm gonna continue reading that because I'm really digging it. Um, it's based on mythology from the perspective of this female character or mythological figure. So it's really interesting. And then the last book is totally different. It's nonfiction. It's a book called The Second Mountain, The Quest for a Moral Life by David Brooks. Um, I heard David Brooks interviewed on the forum on KQED, which is a PBS station out here in the Bay Area. And he um, works for PBS. He's a New York Times columnist. He writes, I think, for the Wall Street Journal too. I'm not sure. Um, he's pretty well known. He's conservative, but has kind of changed that in the last, I want to say, eight years, six or six or seven years or so. Um, but he has a lot of interesting observations on kind of the state of our global culture in general, how it how we've been affected by social media, how we have been affected by this kind of focus on individualism, and there's a real lack of community, a value of community, of um, of nurturing relationships with one another in person, um, how it's affecting anxiety, this kind of anxiety outbreak that we're having and it's just an interesting perspective on something that I've been kind of chatting about off and on here on the podcast since the new year um, in terms of kind of trying to navigate this totally new world that we're in with social media and this connectivity that we have through here on YouTube and on Instagram but then we also meet each other in real life and just really trying to make sure that I'm nurturing my spirit in a way that is not closing myself off from the rest of the world, which I feel like there's a real ease of, of an tendency to do because we're so connected in different ways, if that makes any sense. So I'm probably about a fourth of the way through the book. It's really interesting. I had to switch to an audible version so um, I can try to make my way through it because I'm getting, I'm picking up steam with my schedule, with my singing schedule. So it'll be something probably on the way to work that I listen to off and on. Um, but I also have, I like switching back and forth sometimes between the audible books and the Kindle. Uh, based on just how my brain is working that day um, and how I'm wanting to absorb the story. And I have some that are in my queue to read, uh, Where the Crawdad Where the Crawdads Are, I think is what it's called, and Educated, and I think there's another one, I can't remember, but I'm on Goodreads. I saw a bunch of you friended me and followed me on Goodreads. Hello, friends on Goodreads, which is a site through Amazon where you can share books that are in your queue. It's kind of like Ravelry, but for books. 
Um, so I'll have my link down below should you want to check me out on there and friend me. I'd love to see what you all are reading or have read. Yay, books. <laughs> um, and then just some quick kind of life stuff. I mentioned my family moved. Um, Mom sold the house. Um, it sold in a weekend, so it sold very, very quickly, which I had no doubt it was going to do. Um, but it was just another quick final move, final push out of the house. And so this past weekend, the movers came, got everything. Um, and then we said our goodbyes, or I said my goodbyes. They say their final goodbyes this week. Um, my mom and my sister. But I said my final goodbyes to the house on Saturday or Sunday on Sunday and it's just bittersweet ready we're ready to move on to the next chapter um, but there's a lot of memories good and bad in that house and it's one of the family homes that we've had the longest we moved quite a bit growing up my father was a Methodist minister so we moved about every four to seven years so um, having a house for nine and a half years is kind of a, a, a feat in this family <laughs> uh, and all of the memories that were held in that home. So we have a candle ceremony that we've done throughout the years where when we enter a home, we have a candle ceremony. We go through each room and share what, um, share what our hopes and dreams are for the room and for the home. And then when we move out of the home, when it's empty, we do the similar ceremony. We go to each room with the candle, share our memories, focus on the happy times as much as possible. We laugh and we cry and it's cathartic, it's moving, it's, but it's very hard. And then the same day, God, was that the same day? No, Monday. Whew, that would have been too much. But Monday, yesterday, I went to the city and to a farewell party for my friend Ashley and her husband Charlie are moving very quickly um, for awesome reasons to Boulder, Colorado. This is Comic-Con, Ashley, my dear friend. And it hit me, y'all. It hit me hard. I... I'm going to miss her horribly. We've gotten really close, especially since going to Comic-Con together. And we're going to continue to go to Comic-Con and different Comic-Cons. Um, I'm going to see her hopefully on Friday for a little bit. Um, give her a final hug goodbye. Um, but yeah. And then my friend Radoslava is um, getting married and in a month. And she's moving too. So... Yeah, hence why I haven't been podcasting a lot because there's a lot of life changes happening. <laughs> and hence why my making mojo has taken a big ding and it's just kind of starting to come back as these chapters are closing and exciting new ones are opening. So yeah. Um, oh yeah, Cheryl and Seth got hitched. I just looked at my notes. Uh, on May the 4th um, and a lot of you who follow me on Instagram saw the photos of those uh, of the wedding rather um, it was hard because I just was like I could see the kill toes on Seth and the potential and the photographs that will never be taken <laughs> it was like ugh, it was heartbreaking but I will continue making them and he will have them and it will be a fun experience and process to share with you all so there you go and then finally but not least game of thrones you know i had to mention game of thrones right i only posted like a different photo every day in the last six weeks i have many thoughts i'm not going to do spoilers maybe in the future, I'll do like a spoiler review or something. I don't know. But I will say the storyline and the things that happen, I'm not surprised by. I'm cool with them. I think they were good choices. However, I would have loved if they had had at least, at least four more episodes, like a full season to flesh everything out if not another season, because the things that happened did feel really sudden because you didn't have 
a lot of necessary scenes to build that character development and tension. So it's a bummer because I know, I mean, this sounds pretentious to say, I know from working behind the scenes in the performing arts, all of the elements that need to come together in order to create a piece of art. So I'm sure like they didn't have any more budget. They didn't have very much more commitment from the actors, from the showrunners. They needed to move on for a variety of reasons, but oh, it would have been so much better if they had a little bit more time to develop some things. All that being said, the quality of this season and the quality, minus the water bottles and the cup cups, the quality was masterful. The costumes, the special effects, the stuntmen, the direction, the cinematography, the, it was just, I was like, nah, nah, nah. it was beautiful. And I don't agree with people signing a petition saying, like, redo the whole season. I think that's insulting and just kind of elitist and not like it's a TV show people come on <laughs> you got it for $14.99 basically like all of this amazing stuff that you probably could have seen in a theater for like the same price for each episode so slowly roll sorry if you're one of those people but not sorry <laughs> on that note <laughs> I'm gonna stop jabbering. This is probably a massive episode. Hopefully you've had fun catching up and knitting. I hope your projects are going well and stitching is going well if you're stitching. It's good to be back and I'm gonna do my darndest to keep coming back and visiting, not trying to wait for perfection and for things to be done and for me to have something to share with you because inevitably, as you have seen today or this evening when you were watching this, I could chat forever about making because I love it so much and I love the process of making. So with that, I will see you all next time. If you, enjoyed this visit today hit the subscribe button down below hit the old thumbs up and until next time cheers